Hi, just a quick one. I've just come across this. Someone left a comment somewhere in a video on YouTube, and well, I've clicked on it. And I, well, I didn't click on the, the thing. They just said search for this. So I've searched for it in Google. I've come up with British Medical Journal. Um, this is fair use. This is for educational purposes, informative purposes. People need to see this. It's a proper peer-reviewed scientific paper because it's in the British Medical Journal. Um, there's no community guidelines or all like that or anything like that or all like that. So if it gets taken down because of something like that, like a guideline that goes against YouTube's policies or whatever, then basically that's YouTube turning around saying that the British Medical Journal are a conspiracy theory or disinformation or misinformation. So if they want, they want to claim that, then they can take it up with the British Medical Journal, can't they? Um, like I said, this is fair use. People need to see this. Um, it says intended for healthcare professionals. The BMJ, the British Medical Journal. Um, you don't need to see that bit there. If you go on this bit here, you just make it a bit bigger so we can see it a bit better. Psych psychosocial, biological and immuno immunological risks for children and pupils make long-term wearing of mouth masks difficult to maintain. In a recent article, West... West Husen and colleagues argued for a global implementation of face covering to control COVID-19 virus spread. In doing so, they do, they do not differentiate between adults, adolescents and children. This rapid response considers the negative effects at the immunological and psychological level of mandating face masks for children and adolescents and maintains that they outweigh the possible gains. SARS-CoV-2 infection and transmission in children and adolescents is low. Infections with the virus SARS-CoV-2 can occur in children and adolescents. The course of the, course of the disease is often mild or asymptomatic. In exceptional cases, severe COVID-19 symptoms can occur in children or adolescents with underlying diseases. Just like the flu would anyway. Not that they've proven it to exist because they haven't satisfied the Koch postulate yet, but we'll just go over what they're saying here, right? Because like I said, this is a proper scientific um, peer-reviewed journal. Um... In a number of studies of hospitalised children with Kawasaki syndrome or multiple inflammations, there is a suspicion of a relationship with SARS-CoV-2 infection, but this has not been unequivocally proven. Antibodies and or a positive RT-PCR test were not detected in all patients. Analyses by the Karolinska and Pasteur Institute concluded that children and adolescents are unlikely to be the main spreaders in a COVID-19 pandemic. Contamination from children to parents or teachers is sporadic. To date, the risk of infection appears to be greatest in the home situation, nursing homes and hospitals. Where these people that are sick and dying anyway are, all, are elderly people. Um, just like the flu. Um, in Sweden, where face masks are not used in schools, and schools even remained open during the first wave, as in other countries, the number of older people in intensive care has dropped from June to a few per week. Despite the recent increase in COVID-19 infections, in many other countries, only a small de increase in COVID-19 patients in intensive care units can be observed. Face masks at school, a slippery slope from virus protection to mental breakdown. Reducing virus contamination using face masks remains a topic of heated debate among scientists and policymakers. At the outset, outset of the pandemic, the WHO experts advise that use of face masks is not recommended as potential benefits are rather limited and there is a potential risk of self-contamination if used improperly. Moreover, the WHO stated in their report on June the 5th, at present there is no direct evidence from studies on COVID-19 and in healthy people in the community on the effectiveness of universal masking of healthy people in the community to prevent infection with respiratory viruses, including COVID-19. Contamination of the upper respiratory tract by viruses and bacteria on the outside of medical face masks has been detected in several hospitals. Another research shows that a moist mask is a breeding ground for antibiotic-resistant bacteria and fungi, which can undermine mucosal viral immunity. This research advocates the use of medical-slash-surgical masks intended of, instead of homemade cotton masks that are used once and replaced after a few hours. This means that a family with two children and two parents who go to work by public transport and do their shopping will consume 20 face masks per day. That's about €25 Euros a day or €9,000 a year per family. I don't know how much that is per pounds or dollars, I don't know. It's probably about 20, 20, 22, 23 pounds, about 8,800, 8,900 pounds a year. 
Um, today, face masks are considered an, an easily enforceable low-cost measure with 1.5 metre, or 2 metre, depending on where you're from. Social distance cannot be respected in unventilated areas or in the presence of immunocompromised patients. Limited experimental and observational studies report a reduced risk of SARS-CoV-2 virus transmission of 6 to 80%. The effectiveness varies greatly depending on the type and quality of the masks. The basic contamination level of the study population laboratory test used the epidemic context. Aside from the highly variable protective effects, the WHO mentioned several negative aspects of frequent long-term use of face masks, fueling the debate as to whether the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. Many people report cla claustrophobic experiences and difficulty getting sufficient oxygen due to the increased resistance to inhaling and exhaling. This can lead to an increased heart rate, nausea, dizziness and headaches, and several other symptoms. In an inquiry among Belgian students wearing mouth masks for one week, 16% reported skin problems and 7% sinusitis. Also problems with eyes and headaches and fatigue were frequently mentioned. Furthermore, face masking can provoke an increase in stress hormones with a negative impact on, impact on immune resilience in the long term. Face masks prevent the mirroring of facial expression, expressions, a process that facilitates empathet em 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 empathetic connections and trust between pupils and teachers. This potentially leads to a significant increase in socio-psychological stress during childhood and puberty and the brain goes... Uh, sorry, the brain undergoes sexual and mental m m m uh, maturation. Sorry about that. I'm tired. I've been up all night. Um, through hormonal epigenetic reprogramming. Several studies show that long term exposure to socio psychological stress leaves neuroepigenetic scars that are difficult to cure in young people and often escalate into mental behavioural problems and weakened immune system. Sorry, and ah, weakened immune system. A recent study by the CDC concludes that in young adults to 18 to 24 years, the level of anxiety and depression has increased by 63% since the corona crisis. A quarter of them think about suicide. As a result, the use of antidepressants has increased by 25%. Several researchers have shown a relationship between the increase in stress experiences and the risk of upper respiratory tract infections and mortality. A healthy diet and lifestyle for young people is more important than ever in the context of COVID-19. At this moment, the health protective benefits of non-professional use of face masks, masks are doubtful. Hence, we argue for a less one-sided focus on face masking, paying more attention for healthy lifestyle and psychological well-being, especially for children and young people with, from families of a low economic status, malnutrition or chronic illness, explicit government support is requested. Attention to underexposed but important preventative nutritional support, including vitamins D and C, is needed to increase the antiviral immune resistance, control disease and virus spread. Complementary integration of healthy nutrition and lifestyle measures will further, further allow to reduce com comorbidity risks, obesity, diabetes, CVD, for severe COVID-19 infections which at long term will contribute to improved health and reduction in healthcare costs and promote resilience for a healthier society. Dr. Carla Peters, corresponding author, CEO and founder of the Cobala Good Care Feels Better Utrecht, the Netherlands. Professor Dr. Wim Vandenberg, Department Biomedical Sciences, PPES Lab, Protein Chemistry, Proteomics and Epigenetic Signaling, University of Antwerp. And there's all the stuff here. There's another doctor, Professor Dr. Matthias Desmer, Van der Summitiel. There's, there's loads of doctors and loads of people that have like, had something to do with this research. There's all the people that have got something to do with it. All the doctors, all the professors from around the world, basically, all over Europe and all around the world. There's loads of them, look. Um, I'll leave a link to this anyway so you can go and have a look. And share this everywhere because people need to see this. Like I said, it's from the British Medical Journal, so it's not. It's classed as an authoritative um, source of information, British Medical Journal, and it's on. It's online. It's there for the public to see. Like I said, I'll leave a link anyway. There's some more research on here that's been done to do with it as well. So at the bottom of the page, it goes on for quite a long, long time. Like I said, it's intended for healthcare professionals, but everyone needs to see this. Like I said at the beginning, fair use, you know what I mean? It's not it's not going against any policy, YouTube's policies or all like that because it's not conspiracy theory. Unless the like I said, unless they're claiming that the British Medical Journal is a conspiracy theorist publication. 
or this could be claiming that the British Medical Journal isn't um, what they call it good information unless you're saying that that's misinformation or disinformation then if they are then that's they need to set that up with the British Medical Journal don't they so uh, here we go anyway that's it um, that's it for this one thank you goodbye